Come on up here. Oh, you dropped your Sharky. Sharky. Welcome to Bow Trick Sailing. We've been in Fakarava for a couple of weeks now. Uh, we're here waiting for wind. The wind has been east, oh, let's say forever. And it's been a nice little community of boats here. Uh, we've been uh, spending some time together having some meals and things, and we're all waiting for some wind to change because most of the boats want to go east. And it's very difficult to go east when the wind is from the east, as all sailors know. We are Pierre, Lisa, and Tiller, now sailing in French Polynesia in the South Pacific. Please subscribe to our channel to follow our adventures and also to help us bring awareness for vascular brain disease called cerebral cavernous malformation. So this video will be about um, living in the Tuamotos. First, let's recap. We were in Tahiti. We had a little storm blow in before we left the boat on a mooring to go home, so we knew the mooring was safe. And when we got back, we had a weather window to sail to Fakarava. This is the view from the airport anchorage in Papiti Tahiti. The airport on one side, in the middle of the runway, so we don't get all the noise of the planes. And a beautiful view of Moria on the other side, with some turquoise water just inside the barrier reef, and it's beautiful for swimming, shallow, with rays and turtles readily visible. With provisions on board and a light southeast wind, we set sail for Fakarapa, where we had friends coming in that were going to stay with us for a week. We had a very enjoyable overnight sail. The next morning the winds were light, so we needed to motor sail towards Fakarava. We're in Fakarava. We've been here well, a couple weeks now. We had some friends come in for a week. We did a lot of snorkeling and some diving in the South Pass. Fish identification. Uh, lots of fun with our friends who are kind of amateur marine biologists. Um, they're real biologists who have really taken a love of coral reefs and I learned a lot from them as well. Meet Corey and Marcia. We picked them up at the airport and we anchored near town for the night Corey is an excellent underwater photographer and I learned some fish identification from him as well. I really wanted things to go smoothly because it was just a short trip for them and anyone who's watched our videos knows that things can go wrong on boats. Well, the first thing that went wrong is that the windlass broke and we were anchored in about 70 feet of water. Well, lifting 70 foot vertical of anchor chain manually is not really feasible, so we had to come up with a workaround solution. And not to mention that the anchorage near the main town of Rota Eva is full of dead coral heads. So it's important to keep the boat moving forward towards the anchor so there's never tension on the chain as it's being lifted or it could get stuck on a coral head. The windlass has a small motor that works on 24 DC from the battery on Biotrek. And that motor spins fast to raise the anchor. So there's a gear reduction to slow the speed of the windlass. And it was on that gear that one of the teeth was broken. That meant that the windlass could not turn a full turn and needed to be helped past the broken bit. With sheer brute strength, we got the anchor raised and then we were on our way from the town of Rotoeva towards the South Pass. The wind speed was 17 to 18 knots and we were going fast with no waves in the lagoon. There was our boat. 
full main in Genoa, we were going fast. We were going approximately 12 knots, between 11 and 12. We had to keep a very careful lookout for heads, even though we were in the channel. And soon it was time to take down the mainsail, and we had already arrived in Harifa. We anchored in a spot that we'd anchored before where we knew there were no coral heads and we knew it was shallow so we wouldn't have as much trouble retrieving the anchor. With our windless problem, we decided to keep the boat in Harifa and not take the boat to the south past where the anchorage is deeper and it tends to be very windy, but rather what we did is we took the dive boat from the nearby pension or lodge from Ramiti Lodge and we used them to take us to the south pass for our diving and snorkeling. Driving at the pass is generally with an inward current, and there can be lots of current. This step, all light is absorbed except blue, and even a red filter can't take the blue away, so lights would be needed, but I don't like diving with uh, all those cumbersome lights, at least not yet. This Napoleon Rass was as big as a small Volkswagen. You can see at this depth, some of the color is coming back when I use a red filter on my GoPro. This is a unicorn fish. They're actually an edible species. Even in Fakarava, where cicatera toxin poisoning is a problem. But Pierre and I don't need any reef fish. These trigger fish can actually be dangerous on a reef because they protect a nest and are known to attack divers sometimes. They're blue chromis. You tend to see a lot of them around Steghorn coral. This is a black saddle grouper. And while we were snorkeling, we also saw a camouflage grouper, honeycomb grouper, and a peacock grouper. Here's another trigger fish. Mast bannerfish. Do you know what kind of fish this is? Let me know in the comments below. This is a scrawled tilefish. It camouflages itself by changing colors and changing its squalls. Just watch as that happens here. These are blue striped snappers. Beautiful needlefish swim just below the surface.
shares a school of green and black axle chromis fish together with a trumpet fish. Here's a very large school of one spot snappers. South Pasifak Raba is a UNESCO heritage site, and you can see how preservation has made a difference. Even with global warming taking its toll on many coral reefs throughout the world, this reef is still very well preserved. Back at the Bodhi Tarifa, there were schools of fish, a type of sardine, Marsha and I went out to investigate, and by sticking the camera in the water, we could see that there were sharks swimming below these schools, probably trying to pick, pick some off, and there were other fish diving in and out from the side, and there were birds diving from above. It was Tiller's birthday, so we let her have a nice playtime on the beach. She's now four years old. This is a yellow wasp of Tahiti. Unfortunately, Cory stumbled on a wasp nest and got stung in multiple places. Look at the swollen hand. That's a wasp sting. And After a last snorkel at the red marker, it was time to lift anchor. And remember, our windlass is broken. As Pierre said, the first time he used his muscle and this time he used his brains. What he set up was a system of two ropes with hooks, one which I took to the bow of the boat and hooked on the anchor chain. He then used that rope to winch it up from the electric winch in the back. And when the chain got up to the windlass, we hooked on another hook so that we could release it and then I could take the first hook and bring it back to the front again. And so with this series of back and forth, we could safely bring up the anchor chain without using any extraordinary muscle or measures. And while I'm raising the anchor, I'd like to mention I'm trying to bring awareness for a vascular brain tumor called cavernous malformation. I know that my efforts to bring awareness for CCM have helped at least one family I was contacted by someone I had met in the Tuamotos. He's in France and he was talking to someone from Outremer and he was mentioning the problem with this person and his family and Outremer said, well, you should watch the Biotrack videos because they're talking about that. The Alliance to Cure is an organization that can give information to patients and their family. We are based in the United States, but have an international network of neurosurgeons and other specialists who treat CCM, research scientists, patient advocates, and patrons who support the foundation. We donate to the foundation, and if you want to give, the links are in the description below and on the Biotrack Sailing website. part of the boat with the chain that was brought up and put safely down into the chain locker. Once the anchor was up, the wind was right for putting up the code D, and our sail back to Bukoeva, the main town in Fakarap.
Once back in town, we docked at the fuel dock because it was closed. Rather than anchor at the 70 foot depth of this anchorage with our windlass broken. And we had a nice evening out before Corey and Marsha left the next day. We dropped Corey and Marsha off at the airport, right at the airport dock. We bumped into our dive guide from the Miti Lodge at the airport. Oh, yes. Yeah. Hey. And with the airplane being late, invited everyone back to the boat again to have a drink while we waited for the flight. When the airplane arrived, the new windlass we had ordered was on it, and you'll see it being installed in the next video. If you've watched this all the way to the end, then you're probably a sailor who likes selling videos. I'd really appreciate your comments on what you'd like to see in selling videos. Did you like the fish identification? Would you rather see more or less of underwater shots? Would you rather see more about the lifestyle, about sailing, about how we choose our sail plan? Please let me know in the comments below. Why are we in Pakarava so long? Well, the wind has been east forever and it's not predicted to switch until tomorrow. And so we've had a little community here in this anchorage in Harifa. It's been really fun over the holidays, uh, lots of activities together. Gotten to know Jamala, a boat from the UK and Ticket to Ride, a boat from Texas. They just had the winds on board. And so that was interesting to, to find out about that. They did a lot of sailing. They were lucky to have some wind then. And um, so some of those boats are going to go off to Gambier. We've been to Gambier and we're going to be going up to Marquesas. Don't destroy this. Yeah, we're going to be going up to Marquesas. Um, and so the wind's going to switch northeast. We're going to jump over to Mekimo and uh, wait there until we get a southeast wind so that we can head uh, up to the Marquesas. So the problem, of course, is everyone wants to go east and the wind's been from the east. And whatever wind there is, there really hasn't been a lot of wind. There hasn't been enough wind. There's nobody wingboarding. So no wind for, for those kind of water sports. Uh, just swimming, snorkeling, and enjoying the area, having some nice meals together. And um, yeah, it's been, it's, it's, it's been a nice holiday here. So that's a little bit what it's like passing the holidays in the tour motors. It's been really nice and I look forward to sharing some more sailing videos with you as we travel on towards the Marquises.